Hello everyone! In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to go about drawing a realistic portrait from reference. The best way to learn how to draw a realistic portrait is by using reference, that you can then implement the knowledge that you gain over time from drawing from reference into whatever artwork you want to create. Hopefully this video will teach you how to draw more accurately and efficiently. Keep in mind that this is what I find works best for me, but you might find certain techniques that work better for you. If you're interested in trying this exact drawing out and using the same reference picture, there'll be a link in the description box to it. But hopefully this video will teach you the basics and make it easier for you to draw from any reference photo. Let's jump right into it. I normally like to start off with roughing in the hairline then continuing to work down the edge of the face. Whether that's a side view or straight on, I always like to start with the largest shape, which is the face, of course. Now from your reference image, you really want to pay attention to the angles. Don't worry about the curves right now, just worry about those straight planes to get that shape. When you focus on the whole picture as opposed to the individual facial features, you're more likely to be successful in creating the accurate look of your reference image. You know, getting all the proportions correct for that individual person. Now I'm just continuing on with the jawline and now the top of the hair. Again, there's really not a set order that you need to do things. It, you know, varies from picture to picture. I normally like to put in the rough line of the eyebrows you might find it useful to kind of draw the line straight across where you think proportionally the eyebrows should fall, as you can see there, you know, those angles, so that they're in the right direction, you know. For this image, because she's facing off to the side, they aren't straight, they're on a bit of an angle. Just going back and refining that edge of the face a little more, try and get it a little more accurate to the picture. Now I'm just putting the eyebrow roughly again. Everything is rough at this stage. You can go back in and add all the details after you have the main shapes of everything. I'm just continuing on drawing the other side of the nose as well as drawing in the shadows. It might seem strange to actually draw in shadows, but it can actually be very helpful to help with the other proportions of the face. Again, I've looked at the rough distance between the eye and the roughed in eyebrow and I'm putting in that rough eye shape. Now I'm drawing the angle roughly for the eyes again because they're not straight that angle can really help get those proportions correct. Just the angle of the nose, putting in that nostril roughly. The key to drawing a realistic portrait is really getting in those angles proportionally correct in relation to what you've already drawn. That's generally why you want to start with the largest shape, which would be the face outline, because then you're filling in the blanks in between. You know, in this particular reference picture, you can use the edge of the face in relation to the distance where you'd roughly say the tip of the nose would go, and just keep on refining those rough placements. Another thing, and this might sound ridiculous, is it's not a bad thing to erase. You know, everything is rough at this point, so you're bound to be erasing things and just refining everything. If you realize one of your angles is out a bit, don't feel bad erasing that. I think that's why some people have difficulty drawing accurate portraits, is because they put one thing down on the page and they don't want to erase it, so they just continue with that one thing. But if that, you know, say the eyes are off and you're continuing with that, then the whole picture is going to be off if that's what you're using for reference proportionally to everything else you're drawing. And one of my favorite tricks for working on the eyes is not only doing a rough line, say, for the top and the bottom of the actual eye hole, but you also might find it useful to actually put in a small marking where you roughly say the beginning of like the inner eye and the outer eye and just then filling in that shape. And now working down from the rough area of the bottom of the nose, kind of drawing in that cubit's bow and then the top of the lip itself, I'm just 
Again, use what you already have drawn to help you place the next facial feature. In this case, using the edge of the face to get the one side of the mouth and the, say, eye, the line of, you know, upwards from the edge of the mouth to the eye. You know, where does that line up? You could also use the edge of like the nostril, like the edge of the nose, that angle to kind of proportionally get that correct. I'm just roughing in that upper lip line. Again, just rough in those shapes and continue to refine the things that are already there. You know, continue to just add detail as you go. Once you're happy with the proportions you've already put out. You know, continue to draw in those shadows if it helps you place some of the other facial features. If you realize something's a little off, just try and make that more accurate. It's really about going back and forth between the different rough outlines that you've already set there. For the eyebrows, I personally like to just draw the upper line and the bottom line, like the outline of the eyebrow, but you might find it more useful if you actually draw in the hairs to get the correct shape of the eyebrow. Now for the eyes, I'm going in and starting off with the eyelid crease. Now, not everyone that you might be drawing might have an eyelid crease, but because that's closer to the eyebrow, I find that it's just easy to get that area more proportionally correct when you start with a thing that's closer to the thing that you've already drawn in. As you can see, I'm just going along and refining, making sure all of those angles and shapes are correct to what I've started to add to the face. Now starting with the bottom lip, I'm just using the upper lip that I've already put there to help with the placement of the two sides, but also I find it useful to use the chin or jawline to get the bottom lip line more accurate. And because your mouth is slightly open, of course, you actually have two different lip edges in this one. If the mouth was closed, you just have that one line across. But just adding in the lines of the lip too can help get that shape more accurate. You might find that it's easier for you for the lips to kind of do the same idea for the eyes. You know, mark out that space between the chin and where you think the bottom lip edge would go and then between the nose and the bottom lip edge where that top lip would go and you know marking those lines out where they line up with the eyes and then just filling that shape in. I'm just roughing out that neckline though again there's really not a set order that you have to draw things in, you know, you might want to put in the neck right after you have the outline of the face. Now for the eyes, I've kind of already gone in and roughed out that curved shape, but Again, you might want to fill in the blanks between the marking of the edge of the eye and the inner eye and then kind of get that swoop in using the edge of the face and the eyebrows as guidelines to get those markings in place. Now for this reference picture, you can actually see the waterline of the eye, which is that, you know, inner rim. So that's why there's two lines that I'm worrying about for here. I'm getting that line where it is closer to the eyeball and then the lash line. For getting the placement of the actual iris in, I like to look at the corners of the eye. You know, that having the eyeball in there kind of creates that triangle. So look at that in-between space and get that curve where that triangle kind of forms on either side, where the iris meets the edge of the eye. Now 
for the pupil, I like to look at the distance between the edges of the eye in relation to where it actually hits. You might want to do some rough markings where the pupil is from the bottom of the eye on either side before actually creating that rounded shape. I also like to draw in the highlights of the eyes, especially if they're obscuring the pupil. Really focus on the shapes that you're seeing more than what you're actually drawing. It's a common mistake that all irises are perfect circles, when in reality, they aren't. It's very dependent on which way the eyeball is facing. You know, when it's more off to the side like this, it's actually much closer to being an oval than a circle. to the other eye. Again, I'm starting with the eyelid crease, but it's very dependent on the type of person you're drawing as to whether, you know, what you want to start with first. Another little trick to know is that if you find the eyes look a bit off, realize that the distance between both eyes is roughly the same size as one eye. You might find that just moving one of the eyes farther out or closer together just improves the accuracy of your drawing. Another thing to keep in mind is that nobody's face is perfectly symmetrical. So even if you're drawing a person, you know, forward facing, straight, dead on, their eyes won't actually be perfectly symmetrical. So really pay attention to those small differences between the two eyes to get that realistic look. I'm doing the same kind of idea that I did for the other eye, but paying attention to the fact that because this eye is angled farther away and differently from the other eye, that curve of the bottom of the eye is much different, you know, it goes down a bit more, you see more of the waterline. Putting in the pupil now, looking at how far away it is from the edge of the iris. And again, just more refining of the details, which that's really when your portrait will start coming to life, is when you just continuously refine things to be more and more accurate to the reference photo. Now to start working on the hair. I kind of do a combination between roughing out the overall shape of the hair as well as just the individual strands. You know, look at the outline of the hair shape. But as far as realistic portraits go, if, you know, the hair isn't 100% accurate to the photo, it's not going to make or break the realism of that portrait. You know, you don't need every single strand in the exact same place. You just want the overall idea of the image and where the hair goes. Again, just adding in more details to the hair and refining things further. just roughing in the shape of the hood or veil. 
Um, as far as the hair goes, you might find it easier for you to kind of, again, draw in those shadows. This hair is fairly simple, but as soon as you start dealing with updos or curls, then you have to worry more about the shape of the shadows as opposed to the individual hair strands. For this portrait, I'm not too worried about the accuracy of the outside line so much as the portrait. You know, I want the main focus to be on the face as opposed to the clothing, but if you're doing a more detailed portrait, you're wanting things equally as detailed and accurate, but that's just not what I was going for for this one. I know in the reference picture her head is cut off at the top, but I'm just, you know, roughly continuing those lines. You don't have to. This is something you will learn to kind of know how to estimate and guess where those lines would end and what that shape would be that you're missing in the reference picture. But for the sake of this portrait to show, I'm just finishing off the top of her head. I'm just doing the last bit of refining and getting the final details accurate. Here's my final sketch. I'm just going to go over and shade it in with a ballpoint pen. And there you have my finished drawing. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.